What's up, guys? It's me, Alexander Jarvis from alexanderjarvis.com, founder of 50 Folds. So we're getting into the training for the SaaS financial model, which I'm sure you have already. So the next sheet we're going to get into is the PL forecast, which is pretty much a doozy to actually fill in because there's only about three or four things you can actually have to put in. Okay. As usual, there's a guide at the top. There's no links or assumptions in it because they're just all going to be embedded directly into the sheet. Uh, it doesn't make sense to put links going in because most of the um, formulas in the model are or the sheet are actually links. Okay, so we'll see that here. There's all these green things: MR customer summary. It's coming MR customer summary, and then it's converting to unit because in this model it's based in thousands. Okay, um, why thousands? It's because if you're making big money, it just is impossible to basically read if they're not in thousands. And so that's why in a lot of the sheets, they're actually in the actual normal number that they are. I know um, uh, division of or removing of those zeros. And then in the financial sheets, just to make it easier to actually read, I convert them into thousands. Okay, And you can see that by timesing by unit, which is this number here, right? Just makes it smaller. So uh, all these things we pulled in across the different sheets. And our customer summary, blah, blah, right? And our customer summary is somewhere up here, okay? Um, what this does, our customer summary, is this is basically just pulling in all the data from here and here, which are huge ass, uh, basically workhorse calculation sheets. You can see that it's absolutely massive. And then you can just see the summary in here without having to go into all that detail, right? And this acts as one of the main places where a lot of the information is gonna be pulled out into other sheets, so it's centralized. So we'll get back here. So it's all been pulled in, it's all the calculations done for you. There's literally nothing that you have to do, okay? We'll see here in gray, these are basically pulling out of your actual sheets, so those numbers are added in, right? So we wanna know, uh, you know, um, how we should be adding revenue, et cetera, in, so that does it. Also is used for calculating what your month-to-month -month growth rates are. So very few things that you need to fill in on this sheet, okay? Very few things. So we're gonna set up what the discount rates are. So here, we're, I don't know, we're assuming it's 2%, maybe you have, no discounts and vouchers, in which case you just don't do it, okay? If you say you'd been doing like a jack ton now, you'll just copy this, and then when you stop doing discounts, you can maybe set that to 2%. And then here you can stop doing it all, in which case it's 0%. Now, if you're like, oh, actually, Alex, I didn't like that, just get rid of them, press control right, or you know, just copy and paste the formula back over, like another way if, if you don't know how to use shortcuts, all right? I'm a nerd, ex investment banker, so yes, I use Excel. Um, and I need the keyboard. So just copy and paste like here, control C, control V, and then everything's back to my original formulas. Next, cancellations. If people are getting a product canceling and you allow that, put in the cancellation rate as a percentage, okay? And that's gonna deduct revenue from you, right? So 2% of this less discounts and vouchers equals the uh, cancellation rates that we're doing. Because if you give people discounts, then you know, you're not gonna make uh, deductions for those. Uh, we're deducting our COGS, which are important in SaaS because you want to have a high gross margin. Something like 80% would be great. Um, you see ours goes down a little bit for some period, but generally it's pretty good. Uh, if you have bad at credit card fraud, just put in the percentage of that. It's a rough assumption. Maybe it's zero for you. I don't know. Um, and then all these get deducted. Depreciation comes in from... Uh, sheets, all this comes from the staff sheets, it's all calculated for you. Then we do conversions here to get to moving from like, you know, an IFRS gap type PL where we're accruing things and stuff. Well, actually, what you really just care about is the operating cash flow when money's actually coming in and going out, hopefully a lot less than what's coming in. And the final thing that you have to fill in the sheet is when you fundraise. So let's say I haven't raised anything. I think there's six million here. Yeah, let's just go to that. So we'll say, okay, oh, oh, we're out of money. We need to raise the next two months. And so you raise a, a, a bridge loan, 500,000 here. And then let's say, I don't know, you're bridging for four months, three months. So you're going to end up getting your whatever, uh, 10 million rounds. It looks like 10,000 the model on this sheet. And then you're getting 10 million in and it comes back in. Now, for nerds, 
Um, something to bear in mind here is I don't have a revolver or something which um, stops you from having a negative cash balance. Okay, um, for a traditional M and A, you know, investment banking type models, you would never allow the cash balance to go to zero. What would happen is you'd assume that you'd have an existing bank relationship set up, and that uh, whenever you need money, you'll just draw down from that facility. It costs you a bit of money, but whatever. You don't run out of money. Startups typically do not have anything like that, so I haven't built it into the model. Um, the reason being is you want to see when things are going to be zero and how negative that are going to be. And so you have to make sure you're going to manage your fundraise to get there. Or if you're a bootstrapper, good for you, that you have to make sure that you're growing in a way that is consistently profitable. Okay, um, so that's just a little note for nerds, just in case you're asking. I purposefully have not done it. I actually I pay a guy to order my models for you now. And he was like, Alex, why isn't that there? And I basically explained to him what I explained to you. All right, there are in the background some little uh, checks to check things out, but it really the um, uh, PL forecast sheet is one of the easiest ones you're going to do. You just you know if you. You know, doing these three things or not at all. You kind of can plan sort of when you're going to fundraise. So it's basically a very easy sheet, but it's probably the one you're going to want to look at the, at the most um, of playing around. I don't care so much about the PL combined sheet, frankly, myself, but when I'm reviewing my numbers, how much we're going to be doing is forecasts, right? Uh, I want to check what these are out. So, uh, PL combined, PL deck. Okay, so next video, guys, uh, we've got a video of the PL combined, which is this sheet, and the mm, uh, PL for deck. I get into a little bit more detail in. Uh, in this video. Well, sorry, we're going to be covering these. I'm actually just going to use my old video, which I did about uh, two years ago, and I'll do that for actually quite a lot of the other ones, because basically a lot of the sheets haven't fundamentally changed. I've done some nerdy things in the background, like use index match instead of VLOOKUP functions and things like that, but most of you will not give a shit about that level of nerdy land. Um, so I'm just going to basically reuse my videos because it just saves me time from having to make more ones and I can focus on making more value for you guys uh, by doing other more productive things. So if you notice that I may look a bit younger and better looking or that the sheet looks a bit different, don't worry. It's basically exactly the same thing. Um, I'm just saving us some time by doing it. And I'll also, frankly, to be honest, I think I probably knew the models like two years ago when I actually made them from scratch then. So uh, if you actually look at some of the older videos, you'll, I'll explain things probably a little bit more nerdier. So actually, there's a link, I think, on the new trading video sheet to where the old ones are, where I've actually made new videos, for example, like for this uh, PL forecast sheet. Uh, if you want, you can also look at the old ones. I sometimes get into a little bit more nerdy detail here. But what I'm generally trying to do now with these videos that I'm making new is just tell you exactly what you need to know in order to be able to get it done. I'm not teaching you like, you know, going through line by line in the PL explaining what's going on because that's frankly something that you should hopefully know already. Uh, if not, you need to get some help and do some research. Okay, guys, so um, is there anything I want to say? Now, the sheet's basically very similar to what it was before. I mean, something technical things have changed, but you know, there is literally not one assumption for you to pull on the combined sheet easy. For the PL for deck, maybe I've added another line item. Oh, okay, I've did some formatting things so that uh, things are presented better. Again, these are all nerdy things you don't really care about. Again, the PL for deck is just a template that I kind of knocked up for you that you can use just in case you want to put it into your pitch deck. Um, but really, you can change whatever line items, do whatever you want. Uh, you can mess around. You can do this, right? Delete everything. Ah, and literally won't make a difference because nothing is actually linked to the sheet. It's purely a cosmetic output sheet uh, for your benefit. And by the way, your things aren't in green just because I assume you don't want to paste them into your pitch deck or whatever you're going to do uh, with the black formatting. So that's why it's the only sheet I think in the model where things are not actually uh, formatted nicely. Or maybe the MRR one just because there's so many numbers in there, it's stupid. And you know it's an output sheet, but just generally it. So if you want to skip the next video about uh, PL combined, PL for deck, feel free to do so. I'm just going to pick up some little nerdy little tips, but generally there's nothing that you have to do in order to actually fill the sheet in. So if you're in a rush, 
was given. Hey guys, if that was useful, feel free to comment and say hi. Give me a thumbs up. Um, share it with your friends. I don't know why you would, but hey, why not? Um, and if there's anything like important which I've missed that you're like, Alex, I kind of need to ex explain a little bit more. This shouldn't really be with this sheet though. Feel free to sound out the comments and either I'll give you a quick response if it's something that pertains particularly to you, or I'll update the video and get into more details to help you out get this model done as quickly as possible to get you out fundraising with investors and getting back to doing the real work. Okay, guys, bye.